we want to so make flyers that are paper and we want to go with digital on their asses. So we want to create digital flyers and be more echo, not waste so much uh, paper and uh, not have any traction on how many exactly are read or how many follow, really follow up on uh, them. And uh, after all, uh, a flyer is only a piece of paper, a flyer needs to be interactive and uh, also the companies need to be more creative on it and uh, also uh, a photo flyer doesn't really allow you to buy on the spot the product that's on the piece of paper. Okay, so basically uh, at this point uh, Foursquare is doing something familiar, similar but they are very standard in uh, locations and uh, everything that locate, that like location, they are boring and they are sort of lifeless. You can see we want to do something more uh, creative, uh, more alive that uh, will better uh, express and meet the uh, company and customer needs. That's not okay. it. Yeah. So I really like, uh, really like the idea because I invest in a company that is just doing that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's called Smore Pages. Uh, the, the Israeli company I talked about before. So the, the whole idea is in, you know, have a live product. But, um, two, two things they do, um, um, they do really different a little bit to, to you. Um, the, the first one, they really focus on making it super easy to create a flyer. So there's, you know, when you think about it, but, and I think it's, it, it's valid for a lot of publishing businesses. When, when you take down the barriers to publishing, you're gonna see a lot of publishing activity. This is what Tumblr did to blogging. It made it suddenly super easy to create a blog, a blog entry, um, and, and dispute it. This is why Twitter is so successful, because in the end, they, they really took down barriers to, to, to publishing. And this is what, what small pages, and you know, I mean, in hindsight, it's what, what you're trying to do, you know, um, make it super easy to create a good looking flyer, uh, and then, you know, give it to small and medium-sized businesses that don't want to pay a designer or a marketer, uh, etc. Okay. Um, the small pages doesn't, doesn't currently focus more on the web than mobile, but it might be a very good strategy to really think about you know, how can you do that in, 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 in mobile. The only thing, the flyer creation, probably going to be hard on mobile. So my, my question would be, you know, how does a business really create a flyer because the mobile is going to be, um, going to be a little tough. Um, well, we basically want to have an, uh, have this uh, square here, so a square, and basically you just drag and drop the elements that you want to you put the you video. You have a blank page and you have yeah. uh, all uh, the elements on the side and just put exactly what you want. Yeah. You can upload the background or yeah. what you want. Yeah, to try out small pages. It's exactly what they do. Oh. Yeah. You can put in a slide in the map, you can put it as an event listing, you can have event bride to register if it's an event, you can have a purchase function if it's, it's a product, or whatever it is. But it's a great idea, you just have to run faster now than the other guys. It's more pages. It's more pages. Pages. And more, yeah, pages, like the page. <laughs> any, any questions? Also, the other company it's, it's on the web, so in the end it's a tool for small businesses. They're going to post that, that page on, on their Facebook fan page, they send it out to Twitter, they're going to send it out through email. So in the beginning you really try to, um, um, to use your existing social graph or your existing customer contacts to do the distribution. And over time as you create, hopefully thousands and millions of businesses going to create flyers, it might become a destination site with social discovery. So I'll go to small pages because I want to quickly see what are great events or products around the corner, etc. So you could argue if you get enough mass, you could replace yellow pages and the functionality, right? And create a destination page. Like Tumblr, you know, in the beginning it was very much a blogging tool and I just sent it out to my friends and drove the, 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 the traffic to, to my, my page. And over time, it became a destination site where people went to discover cool things. It's a long way for either you or small pages to, to get there, but that should be the play.
why are you thinking of in terms of distribution? Because the models, I'm assuming you have a different model than what Boris just uh, detailed. Uh, we're at the moment uh, exploring two options, either a uh, add-on for Foursquare to put it over a Foursquare and use uh, their uh, infrastructure, so to say. Or we, can, or we are exploring the possibility to develop, it, uh, to develop a system on our own. But uh, we are at the moment uh, exploring both of them to see exactly what the limitations of work would be for Foursquare and what the advantages and how hard would it be for us to develop our own thing. Okay. I think that's a good idea. You should consider uh, maybe having, uh, if I follow a company on Facebook, I should get, the, get their flyers. And if I'm in their geographical location, I should more more so get their Yeah, but uh, here we need the uh, help for, of the company in order yeah. for them to introduce uh, this thing in their... Uh, yeah, but they would do that. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's in their advantage. Your your business is basically selling eyeballs. So companies love buying eyeballs. You should you should talk to companies yeah. about that. I think the, the, the general lesson learned, and I talked to, to some of you guys before about that, um, it, it, it is amazing how many of the similar startups of years are popping up in completely different geographies, right? Yeah. I mean, you didn't know about small pages, and you know, there's a company that got started in Seattle, and you're here in Bucharest, and it, 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 you know, startup innovation seems to be coming in waves. Um, and for whatever reason, it's like same, different people come out with the same ideas in very different locations. And uh, I think what the, the important lesson learned is you're never alone with your ideas. Somebody else is already working on that, or is, is you know will work on that more. Um, so always you know be, be paranoid and run as fast as possible. Yeah, uh, in, in the end, most of these markets are winner take it all market, or the winner takes most of the market. You need to be the clear category leader in that that space. So you need to run as fast as possible. And if you only know about two or three competitors, most likely going to be six, seven, eight others that are working on the same problem same time somewhere else and you just don't know. So. Uh, side question for you, so you're not into the whole long tail things. No, when you look at when you look at internet markets, it, it's really interesting. Um, in most other verticals, industries, there's always two or three big players. Right? There's almost no natural monopolies in 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 any of the any industry out there. Right? Yeah. Perhaps in, in some natural resources, there's usually very big companies because you need a lot of scale and a lot of money and it, it tends to consolidate. But everything else, there's you know, the, biggest, the biggest player that usually has 30% of the, of the market share. Now look at, now look at what, what's happening in technology right now. You have Google who has a market share of 70% of the search market. You have Amazon that has a market share of 67% of the, the online retail market. You have Facebook that has probably 90%, 80 to 90% of the social networking market, right? So every single market tends to um, go, you know, kind of consolidate and, and create one natural monopolist or close to a monopolist. Many, many followers, right? But they usually don't have a lot of, um, a lot of scale. So, the, and, and, and the reason is either it's network effects, or it's extreme scale that it's really hard for other people to, to come up, or it's data that just the big guys have so much data that they can kind of um, you know, um, execute much much better than the, 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 the smaller things. So from, from that point of view, unless you're really in a niche and you know, on, on an app level, where there always will be you know, thousands and ten thousands of apps. If you try to build a platform, a big company, in the end, it's going to be um, a natural monopoly, and, and it, it's going to be tough for anybody else to, to catch up. Okay. Thanks. Okay.